for the coronavirus. All of us here at CBS News are working together to keep you informed. One of the biggest challenges in tracking the spread of coronavirus across the country isn't just the lack of tests. It's also the different ways states are choosing to share that data, presenting a big problem for scientists hoping to get the big picture on the pandemic. Reporter Stephen Mufson has been following the story for The Washington Post. He explained to me what this means for us here in Southern California. Looking at your article, uh, it, it just almost doesn't make sense, some of the discrepancies. Some states are choosing to ignore negative tests or to uh, track state tests versus uh, private lab tests. Can you please explain what is going on? Sure. Well, it's extremely complicated. Um, at the time we did our story, there were eight uh, states that were only reporting positive tests, which made it very difficult to tell uh, you know, the, the, um, uh, the extent of the, uh, the, the intensity of the, of the illness. And um, a lot of places were only reporting to the state labs. Other places were reporting to the uh, federal government. And it was just a lot of confusion. And so who is choosing to do that? Is it intentional? Is it an oversight? It seems to be a lot of different things in different states. I mean, you know, Ohio just started uh, testing for, just started posting negative testing again uh, two days ago. But uh, when we did our story, it was it was uh, very strange because they had very few cases and uh, it was, wasn't clear whether uh, they had, they were just kind of hiding a lot of those, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those cases. Um, the other problem is, you know, uh, the people who are actually taking these tests are, are very different. You know, initially we had people uh, who were being directed by their physicians. They might have applied different standards to those people. Um, and now we, you know, what's been happening is that the, the government and hospitals and state governments have been trying to get people to uh, only test if they're running a fever. That doesn't necessarily mean they didn't have a case of the virus, and they're trying to keep the testing facilities focused on healthcare workers who are most at risk. But there still could be a lot of people out there who've had, you know, uh, maybe no symptoms or relatively mild symptoms, and those and those are, are lost in the in the count. So, is there any indication that these states are trying to get on the same page? That they're trying to record all the negative tests, all the testing, all the positive tests at this point? Well, the CDC technically requires states to do that. So, uh, states have just not been complying for the most part. I think that we'll see more compliance, but you're still not going to get an overall picture of the country who's you know who's got the disease and how serious. We were also just looking at uh, numbers in Washington state, which is also kind of telling. You have uh, one pattern if you just look at the state as a whole, but if you look at the state county by county, you see very different patterns. You see a, a surge where there was uh, a lot of people who died at a nursing home. That may or may not be typical of the entire state, much less the entire country. So epidemiologists are struggling very hard to make sense of all this. Right. You know, to your point, one of our first examples uh, as far as stats was in Washington state where uh, a lot of people passed away at that nursing home. So the messaging at that point, uh, intentionally or unintentionally, was that only elderly people uh, would really be gravely impacted by this. And then as it rolled out, we found that that was not the case. So in terms of statistics and what helps people and what doesn't really help them, what do you think people should be focusing on as far as the numbers go? Well, I think, uh, you know, given the shortage of test kits, uh, I think the emphasis on protecting healthcare workers is the most important thing right now. Ultimately, uh, epidemiologists are going to want to go back and try to reconstruct what happened, but it's going to be difficult. Uh, but, you know, given, given the shortages that we have right now, uh, that the healthcare workers really need to be our top priority. So we're really looking at the, the people who are most ill. Any advice to people that are just craving information or that are trying to grasp how serious this really is for them or what they should be doing about it? 
Well, I mean, I can I can just speak for ourselves here in D.C. I mean, right now we're uh, you know supposed to be keeping enough space between us and other people. Uh, my own home's got you know uh, two adult children and myself and my wife. We're all sitting here working and trying to minimize exposure as much as possible. Uh, the Washington Post is not expecting to have people back in the newsroom uh, any time during the month of April. Uh, because uh, given the incubation period of the virus, you're gonna, it's going to take some time before people feel assured, notwithstanding uh, the president's hope that this will all somehow be better by Easter. That's, that's not the feeling uh, among people here. And I think uh, maybe setting expectations uh, a little bit further out might be a good thing and help people so that they don't get more frustrated. Right, absolutely. And you do follow the numbers. So I'm curious, based on you know whether or not these states get on the same page and all the data that is available is released, what do you foresee the next maybe possible few weeks to be in terms of the data? Well, um, I think what people are going to be looking for is a turning point, right? So we're going to be looking for uh, increases that were exponential to become arithmetic, uh, which is to say slower and steep and less less steep, and ultimately to to come down. But we're not seeing that that yet. So, but I think that's really what um, what people are going to be looking for in the numbers, and on and also a uh, a turning point in the death toll. I mean, the death yeah. toll continues to climb. And because people spend uh, some time in hospital before they they die, even if the the number of positives starts to taper off, hospitals will still be in a state of crisis because uh, people will will have been there for days and will remain for some days, even if they do whether they pass away or whether they're able to to leave the hospital. All right, I know it's all a little bit frightening that that map that we saw as far as flattening the curve. It, it, what you're talking about in terms of that turning point, yeah, that's what everyone wants to see is that when we start, uh, when that map starts going downhill as opposed to continuing to spike. Stephen, thank you so much for your reporting. We appreciate it. Thank you. Still ahead, hospitals across.